Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Sayyid Al Mursaleen Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Man Tabi'ahum Bi Ihsan Ila Yom Din Amma Ba'd Fa Inna Asaqa Al Hadith Kitab Allah Wa Khair Al Hadith Hadith Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam Wa Sharru Al Umuri Muhdathatuha Wa Kulla Muhdathatin Bid'a Wa Kulla Bid'aatin Dalala Wa Kulla Dalala Fil Nar قال الله عز وجل في كتابه المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال تعالى ليس البر ان تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من امن بالله واليوم الاخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون الله سبحانه وتعالى has blessed us and showered us with His blessings. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when explaining the nature of His blessings in our lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا He has showered His abundant blessings upon you. Those that you are aware of, and blessings that you are completely unaware of as well. He has showered them upon you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further explains this concept to us when He says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا That if you, if anyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you attempted to count, to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you would be incapable of fully encompassing them. And there's two ways to look at this ayah. Ni'ma can be understood as an ismul jins, that it means blessings in general. That just the blessings in general that Allah has given to you in His life, in your life, that if you were to try to count them, you'd never be able to fully take full account of all the blessings you have in your life. And the other perspective is that this is a singular. This is not the plural, this is a singular. Meaning what Allah is saying, you cannot even fully comprehend how amazing one single blessing of Allah is in your life. How, how bless, what a great blessing each and every single individual blessing is. Like you might sit there and say, Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for the ability to, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ability to see, or for the ability to speak. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is that despite you thinking, you understand what a great blessing this is, you really still do not fully, fully comprehend the implications of this blessing. You still, you never will be able to completely realize how amazing of a blessing one single blessing is. And all of its implications and its impact and its effect on your life. So this is how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. And the reason why I'm mentioning about this simple fact is I want us to... First and foremost here today in the khutbah, I want us to have a mindset. I want us to have this mental awareness of how blessed we truly are. Because the next thing I want us to understand is that the majority of us, I can't generalize, but I can pretty confidently say the vast majority of us, we enjoy amazing luxuries in life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and literally spoiled us to the point where we consider many luxuries, needs and necessities. There are things in our life that, that we consider them to be our needs. But in reality, they are luxuries of life. They are not needs by any means. Needs means that somebody needs a, a, a safe place to sleep. That's a need. But a 4,000 square foot home is not a need. Need means that somebody has a comfortable place to sleep. 
But having lavish furniture spread all over our homes is not a need, it's a luxury. Need is to be able to go from one place to the next. But driving a $30,000 car is not a need, it is a luxury. Need is to be able to eat enough food so that I do not die from starvation. That I do not sleep with pain at night from hunger. Pangs of hunger, I don't feel them. That's called need. But even eating a lavish meal with four different types of food on our table, going and eating at a restaurant where we are spending a hundred dollars at one sitting, that is not a need by any means. That is a luxury. And to equate that to our needs is a crime in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a crime to our fellow human beings. To call that our need. You can enjoy the blessings of Allah if He's blessed you. But never ever delude yourself that this is my need or this is my right or that I am entitled to this. We are entitled to nothing. This, 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 demand, this requires us to have a little bit of a lesson in faith here. A brief, short, two minute lesson in iman, in faith. Who is Allah? What is our relationship to Allah? Our most basic relationship to Allah is that He is the master. He is the Lord, the master, the owner of everything. And everyone and everything is property of Allah. We are slaves of Allah. Slaves. And we should have no problem admitting this. The dignity of a human being is when he accepts that I am the slave of Allah. And a slave is essentially property. For a slave owner, for a slave master, just like the table and the chair are two pieces of furniture, two pieces of property of his, the slave is no different. He's a piece of furniture, he's a property. If I take my phone, or if I take my personal possession as valuable as it might be, I take a computer or I take a phone, and if I sit here in front of you and break it, you might try to talk some sense into me that why are you breaking something valuable, but at the end of the day, could anyone stop me from doing it? Nobody. Nobody can tell me that I cannot break my own phone. Nobody can. Nobody can stop me from doing that. Because it belongs to me. Similarly, just like that phone is a piece of property I completely own, and I have full control over, we are the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are slaves of Allah. He owns us. He has complete control over us. When we understand that, and when we begin to swallow that and digest that, this leads us to the understanding, I am entitled to nothing. No matter how entitled I might feel, I, in reality, I'm entitled to nothing. Anything and everything I have is given to me by Allah. It is a blessing of Allah. And I need to be grateful and thankful to Him for this blessing of Allah. That's it. So our luxuries that we enjoy in our life, a very real step towards gratitude, towards thankfulness, is realizing and understanding these are luxuries, they are not our needs and necessities. And we need to be extremely grateful to Allah, and we also need to start living more disciplined, more practical lives. And going back to that lesson in faith, I need to at all times be aware and be conscious of my Lord, my Master, the one who owns me, who has given me everything that I have, what, does, what has He commanded me to do? What has He commanded me to do? So the first and foremost step of, in, that, in that regard, of course, is to believe in Him. Iman is the first step. After Iman, what are we obligated to do? And then we have the different obligations of deen and religion, the five pillars as the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. But what I want to talk about is connecting that to Iman. Because our actions at the end of the day are... Our Iman manifests. Our Iman manifests itself in the form of our actions. 
I can call myself a, a believer, but if I don't perform salah, and I don't help the poor and the needy, and I'm not, I don't have good character and good akhlaq, I can call myself a believer as much as I want, but it's only here, it's not a reality. It is not a reality. 